Hi, Hannah. Hi, Rebel. Hi. I get to start today, which is not my favorite, um, but I'm brave and I can do it, right? Yes. So I guess first I'll say welcome to Therapist Take. I'm here without Josh Nichols, who's usually joining us um, because he's at a training. So my other colleague, again, tapped into her courage and uh, maybe... Mm -hmm. commitment uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> we're playing on that and uh, rebel Burzmeyer and she stepped in so we are going to talk about EMDR and that's something that rebel and I can talk about for hours and hours actually we enjoy it and we care very much so it's a comfortable and I think a really informative topic yes so stay with us <laughs> Welcome back. So we're going to talk about a trauma treatment today. Um, the abbreviation is EMDR. But before we get started, I'm going to try and just do my little tiny Josh impression and invite everybody mm -hmm. to do all the things that you're supposed to do, like follow, subscribe, bell ringing, and all of the jazz that's supposed to take place, right? Um, so that we can know what's working, people can get information. And also, of course, if you have feedback for us, um, questions or just topics you think would be helpful um, for you to hear us talk about, you're curious about, we'd love to get um, some of that information back. It's really helpful, it's important to us. Um, we talk about things that are important that we hear from our work, um, but even direct feedback this way would be really welcome. So. Again, here we go, Rebel. We're going to talk about EMDR. All right, right, let's do it. Okay. So we kind of wanted this to be a, um, a general topic, right? So we were both thinking this is something that we talk about as clinicians with our clients. When we are meeting clients or maybe even been referred clients, some are directly coming in saying, um, I've had these things happen to me. I think I would like to use EMDR as a treatment. Sometimes we meet with clients, and as we start getting their story, right, as we do our assessment mm -hmm. work, we think, yeah, I think that would be a good mm -hmm. treatment option, right? Mm -hmm. So we're just going to first talk about, first of all, we need to probably label what EMDR stands for. Um, but what we're going to talk about is what is EMDR the most helpful in treating, right? Kind of what's its most effective. Mm -hmm. And there's lots and lots of science around EMDR. I would say it's one of the most highly researched mental health modalities. Um, and so that's first what we're going to start with. Then we can talk about what else is it used for? Because like any clinician, the tools that you have in your toolbox aren't just used for one thing, right? Right. right. And then thirdly, what is the experience like for clients to receive this treatment? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we can talk about that from being in the room, and I can even talk about it from being a patient who's had EMDR, right? So um, that's kind of where I want to start. So I'm going to let you awesome. do the hard part and go ahead and tell everybody what the initials EMDR stand for. Okay. So EMDR stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. Um, it was developed, um, kind of discovered and developed by a woman named Francine Shapiro. Um, she kind of discovered it one day when she was walking and um, noticed that she had done some processing and noticed that along with that processing, her eyes were moving back and forth. Um, so what they have kind of discovered through further um, research is that it's not necessarily the eye movement moving back and forth, um, but it is the bilateral stimulation of the brain. Mm -hmm. So the two different sides of the brain being activated mm -hmm. um, bilaterally. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really kind of pulling up the trauma, um, pulling up the emotions, pulling up everything about that. Doing that bilateral stimulation just kind of helps to process the information and mm -hmm. um, be able to see it from a different perspective. It is, though, the worst name, probably, that you could come up with for mm -hmm. a treatment, right? Mm -hmm. it, it tells you, I guess, what it's doing, but it's such a weirdo thing that I don't even think people know. It's almost like if you'd said something to me in Russian, like, it, right. I just have no way to even process what that right. means. And a lot of people have a hard time getting 
the letters and I I hear E M R D. I hear all uh-huh. the right all the E D M R. Yes, that's what yes, I hear. Yes, I hear that one a lot too. Right, yep. and so I think it's important for us to actually use the whole name so that people can get it right. But I really think that um, probably my trainer said this when I took the training that she kind of wishes she just would have called it reprocessing, mm-hmm. you know, that mm-hmm. that maybe would have been broadened and easier for people to just understand. Right. The idea of eye movement always sounds kind of, um, I'm going to use a bad word yeah. here, but kind of witchy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and you know, it took, I mean, even as a trainee, it took me forever to remember what EMDR yeah. even stood for. Yeah. I was like, what? wait, hold on. Is yeah. it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love though the story that you told about Francine Shapiro because I love, um, putting things into context and story, right? So when mm-hmm. you understand where things come from, um, and the story, and who knows exactly how accurate it is by the time, you know, right? You know, because this was in the 70s, 80s, mm-hmm. right? But the idea of moving and walking is bilateral, right? So let's even describe what what's bilateral, right? right? What are some things that we do, right? right? Yeah, and you know, and that's one of the things that I tell some of my clients too. I mean, they're always coming in and saying, I feel so much better after my run. I feel so much better yes. after my walk, after bicycling. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that is, I mean, the physiological part of our body. Sure, sure. But I'm always like, well, that's also because of the bilateral mm-hmm. stimulation mm-hmm. because you're activating both sides of the brain. Right. Absolutely. Right. And I even really like in the training how they also talk about bilateral being something that's built into being a human and you can see it across culture, right? So all Mm -hmm. cultures have dance. Mm -hmm. All cultures have singing and movement, right? As part of ceremonies, right? As part of tradition. That's bilateral, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, geez, think about how good dance is. Not just, yeah, it's cardiovascular, et cetera, but Mm -hmm. it's bilateral, Mm -hmm. right? Think about what you do when you have a baby. You bounce back and forth, foot to foot, foot to foot, Mm -hmm. foot to foot, right? Mm -hmm. So there are things that I think probably are even just almost biological imposed in us right right right. about things that oh it just feels better when Mm -hmm. like you're saying my clients say boy after my run I really felt better or thought about this or Mm -hmm. was able to you know really come back and I felt less intense or something right so I always like EMDR because I think the premise is actually, if you start thinking about it, it feels very almost organic. It feels very intuitive, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh, I'm this is too much. I've got to go have a run, right? Or, oh my gosh, this is so much. i got to get outside. Mm-hmm. You know, just mm-hmm. these things that feel like there's this part of us that's drawn towards processing as a way to move to healing, right? right. And some symptom reduction. Right, yeah, absolutely. I know. So let's talk a little bit about what, like I mentioned just kind of briefly, but there is a lot of, a lot, a lot of research around how EMDR is helpful, what mm-hmm. it's effective. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what, how would you describe like, oh yes, EMDR is very effective with? Well, it's definitely effective for single trauma incidences. So, you know, car wrecks, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when she first developed it, she developed it initially for Vietnam veterans coming back from war. Um, You know, so really those big traumatic experiences um, is kind of, I mean, I think is Mm -hmm. a large percentage Mm -hmm. of what we use EMDR for. Yes, yes. but we also use it for many other things right. too, and I know we'll talk about those here yeah. in a second. But. Yeah. But I think that what I, th- I think that, when I try to think about how that makes sense, right? Okay, a single event trauma, right, where you were one way, and then this event, this experience took place, and now you're somebody else. Mm-hmm. Everything feels different. Your house is blown away in a tornado. You, you know, you thought you were safe driving and now you're not, right? right. Um, you, you know, you have a battle, right? And you watch your, you know, you know, your battle buddy, your, you mm-hmm. know, be taken from you. Right. Those are going to change you. That moment in time is fixed mm-hmm. in your brain, right? As a standing point, right? Um, and so I think it makes sense that that event going so distinctly from this is who I was and then this happened, mm-hmm. right? Um, mm-hmm. I think we can see why a, pro- a targeted treatment around activating that memory, activating the um, the emotions mm-hmm. and this the negative beliefs that go with that experience from 
before and then after. Right. I think that makes sense that that would be very highly effective. Yeah, right? absolutely. I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our, I think in those single incidences, our brain is just so overwhelmed that it cannot process Mm -hmm. what is occurring at that moment. Mm -hmm. And so it just kind of gets stuck. And so, yeah, to be able to pull out this one event Mm -hmm. and be able to reprocess it and change that belief system, Mm -hmm. um, to me, that makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was doing some reading on on, um, the brain and, you know, obviously – we're probably at the very beginning of actually understanding the brain and the systems, but there was something interesting that really, when I was reading, it made sense to me thinking about EMDR, the idea that when the amygdala, right, the part of our brain that houses our emotion center and our memory, right, Mm -hmm. when it is surprised, so when someone swipes you, right, right, when you, you know, I know we live in Oklahoma, but you still don't think you're really going to get hit by a tornado. Right. Right. So when the event takes place and you're surprised, it is going to overwhelm and hijack your amygdala Mm -hmm. in such an intense way Mm -hmm. that it's, it is coded whether you want to or not into you. Right. Right. And so when I was reading that and I just thought about it, when, when the amygdala can predict, right. Oh, this looks, this looks treacherous, Mm -hmm. right. It's, it's overwhelmed, but it's not as significantly overwhelmed, right. Those events aren't coded in the same Mm -hmm. distinct way. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that makes a lot of sense for those single, especially, I mean, for a lot of things, but especially that single event Mm -hmm. trauma that we really target in EMDR. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's a lot. It is a lot. Yes. Yeah. Um, But it's, but it's not just single events. And I would actually even say that for me as a clinician who works with a lot of couples and a lot of people that are dealing with relational issues, you know, betrayal trauma, past mm-hmm. abusive relationships, that I actually probably as a clinician have used EMDR not for single event, but for other things. Mm-hmm. What about you? Yes. Um, you know, so I see a lot of first responders. So I do do a lot of EMDR with single incident um, traumas, but yes, um, kind of in seeing my partners and um, yes, other just single adults, Mm -hmm. um, I've seen, or I've used EMDR a lot for childhood trauma as well. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a little bit different with childhood trauma, um, but definitely childhood trauma, betrayal trauma, Mm -hmm. um, abusive situations, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, when you say um, childhood trauma, we're, you know, probably actually the most frequent um, way that people experience a childhood trauma is neglect, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so that's traumatic, right? But I think sometimes when we hear childhood trauma, we think a death, we think, you know, physical abuse, right? right? But a a lot of times it's neglect, right? It's that emotional Mm -hmm. absence um, from your family environment absolutely and so have you used emdr with that those kind of Mm -hmm. topics as well Mm -hmm. you know they they often present as you know i'm not good enough or i'm not heard i'm not seen Mm -hmm. and uh, you know kind of tracing that back it Mm -hmm. is it's a lot of it is the um, emotional neglect that they did not receive from family members And I think it's one of the reasons I wanted us to just kind of talk about this is not because that you need to use EMDR for everything, although there are some clinicians that use EMDR Mm -hmm. as their treatment model, Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. is that fair? Yes, it is. And, you know, and I would even say that I kind of prescribe to that. I obviously will utilize the other techniques Mm -hmm. that I have been taught over the years, but I go in with this mindset of the eight phases of EMDR. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think that it fits for so many people. What, what kind of resources do they have? What coping mechanisms, Mm -hmm. um, you know, what has influenced them to have the issues that they have today? Sure. And preparing them for what's next. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Those phases of treatment. Mm -hmm. But I think that sometimes in my experience too, um, other even mental health professionals only refer or recommend 
that their clients seek EMDR treatment for those single event traumas. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed that too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would say so. And I don't I know think. that it's a, I don't, th- I'm, you know, right, wrong, or I mean, it's not a judgment. It's just part of the reason I wanted to talk about it was because there are so many people that I'm continuing to meet and interact with, train with, learn from, mm-hmm. that really are just like, no, I, it's, that's kind of the way I see mm-hmm. the work that I do from mm-hmm. the eight phase perspective, right? Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. that I think when um, you're talking to clients, when you're talking to colleagues, or when you're talking to therapists who may even have a very different perspective, it's just about, well, this is kind of how I see it, right? Mm-hmm. This is how I use this this lens, right, for treatment. Right, yeah. right, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so the other part of EMDR that I really like, and I know that you do too, because this connects to the work that you do, not just with first responders, but also people um, that are running to work on disordered eating and eating disorders, is the idea that EMDR definitely takes this back to the body. Mm, right. So can absolutely. you talk how that works and what that means? Well, so, you know, memories are stored in the body. Um, you know, kind of going back to, I, I mentioned it last week, you know, the vagal nerve. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that vagal nerve controls so much of our body. Mm. And when our fight or flight system is, you know, when that kicks in, that's going to activate that vagal nerve and put us into a fight or flight state. Mm -hmm. And that controls every part of our body Mm -hmm. and our body remembers these things, you know? And so we can have a certain smell and it just triggers the entire body. Mm -hmm. We can have, you know, see something red hair, yeah, you know mm-hmm. that and that just triggers the body and we can feel mm-hmm. feel every part of it in our body mm-hmm. you know and oftentimes clients will ask you know why why can I think mm-hmm. you know everything is okay but it, when I bring it up I can still feel it yes, yes. you know and I kind of talk about well Yes, it's stored in the body, and really that's kind of the last part that we really have to mm-hmm you know, kind of work on is relieving the body of that trauma. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's really important, important because sometimes, especially when you talk about therapy and you talk about cognitive behavioral treatment and obviously cognitive behavioral therapy is a treatment model that's been around for a long time and has a lot of proven effectiveness. And I would say probably every mental health clinician uses tools, Mm -hmm. right? From Mm -hmm. that CBT model. Mm -hmm. But what I think um, is what I think that that message is that we just need to change your thoughts and we just need to change what you do. And I think that what somatic meaning back to the body Mm -hmm. treatment modalities do is that they recognize that the brain and body are not separate. They're connected. So your thoughts, which we tend to associate with being in my head or whatever, Mm -hmm are all, you know, there's, there's, unless you're decapitated, at which point we're not doing any kind of treatment, right? Right. The idea is that the brain and body are always connected. And so while you may be, you know, knowing, like you were mentioning your client, why do I, I know I'm safe right now. I know I'm okay right now. Mm -hmm. My body's having this response, right? Mm -hmm. They're all, they're all connected. Your thoughts are saying I should be fine. Right. And your body's saying there's something here, right? There's a hot spot. Yeah. Um, and I think that true progress is not just necessarily symptom alleviation. The symptom alleviation from an EMDR lens is that we've taken what's kind of been stuck or trapped, mm-hmm. right, that still may send you into that sympathetic nervous system response, fight, flight, freeze, fawn mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And we've actually moved it and stored it back into your memory system. We've resolved that it has already happened and passed, rather than feeling like it's happening all over again. Right. 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 That is a, that is a, that's a connection between the brain and the body. That's Mm -hmm. actually them working together. You know, they're Mm -hmm. always working together, but I I think it's important just to merge the idea of cognition, Mm -hmm. our thoughts Mm -hmm. with what our body is going through. Right. Right. 
Absolutely. And that's what EMDR, I think EMDR does really well, right? You talk mm -hmm. about the phases, right? Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. gathering all those points of information, mm -hmm. right. right? Right. So, you know, and, and we may still have some emotions. Absolutely. We may still experience something, yep. but we're not living. That's right in the past that's right we're in the present and we're able to kind of look back mm -hmm. and notice how a person would feel yep and it's a memory that's right it's a memory yeah yeah well that's a perfect segue into kind of the last point which is really what i hope people find value in today is what's what is the emdr experience like because when you mention this to people, some people are, have already looked into it or are very aware or they've heard or they, whatever. But most people that I've experienced are like, what is that? And mm -hmm. what does that mean? And what is mm -hmm. that like? And especially if they've been clients that we've worked on other kind of things. Like maybe we've done couples therapy and now we're going to... It's, it's different as far as the role of the therapist and how we're interacting, right, with the client. Yes, it is different. Mm -hmm. Um excuse my language for a second, but I Go have a therapist who, you know, kind of describes it as that weird voodoo shit. It is. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's, you come in, mm -hmm. oftentimes, you come in feeling one way, yes. and you do this EMDR, and you leave feeling completely different. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, <laughs> um, one of the biggest things that annoys me is that when I started learning about EMDR, that's all I heard weird was voodoo that shit. weird voodoo shit. I'm going to come in, we're going to do this EMDR and I'm going to leave and I'm going to feel all sorts of better. And uh, that's not always the reality. No, no, um, no. Reality is, is that there are eight phases and we want to make sure that you're ready yes. to do that processing. Yes. Um, you know, and so we do, we prepare mm -hmm. the clients to do the reprocessing phase of it. We make sure that they, um, can emotionally regulate yes. and we can, we make sure that when they leave our office, that they are leave, yes. that they are leaving feeling in the present mm -hmm. and not stuck in the past. Right. Um, I have had one client tell me that they have done EMDR before and, uh, their their therapist did not regulate them before they left mm -hmm. and they spent two weeks in an inpatient hospital. Oh boy. Um, I should not say that on here, but anyway, um, but it's because yeah. the therapist did not teach them right. those self-regulating skills. Mm -hmm. And so I, I spend a lot of time mm -hmm. on that phase. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and so it, it isn't a come in, fix everything right. and leave right. type therapy, but sure. it is at the same time amazing. Yes. I think though also what you're speaking to there is like, you know, the Hippocratic oath, right? At minimum, do no harm. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. so if we've got this thing that will help you, we want to do it, but we can't do it and send you out and you come apart. Now, right. you know, you could make a mistake or do the best you can. And, and, you know, there is a, a, I will say, and I tell my clients this, that we're going to start this journey and I don't, I don't know for sure where it's going to take us. Right. 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 And so there is, there is that, I mean, like anything, mm -hmm. right. There's somewhat of a mm -hmm. risk in the sense that I don't really know exactly how, I wish I could tell you that everybody who comes in, I can say session one will look like this and, right. and you da, da, da. I can't, right? right. But right. I am going to do the due diligence mm -hmm. up front to build your resources, your support, your emotional mm -hmm. regulation skills, right? Mm -hmm. um, that you're in a safe place, that you have realistic expectations, right. um, that you can come in and out of assessing your needs and how well can you do that. And also, I don't want to, I often won't do this work with people if they're still in an unsafe situation, Absolutely. right? Whether they're having to go back to a home or, mm -hmm. or an environment that's just really, they've, they kind of need to stay in fight or flight, you mm -hmm. know? Again, mm -hmm. I know that sounds like heartbreaking, and I think, think that it is, but do no harm. So if I start un unpacking this, and there's going to be some version of coming apart in order, or I tell my clients, let things fall away so that the new can come. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not a safe place to fall, uh, fall, things to fall away, then really it's almost like the brain's going to be working against you. Right, 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 yeah. We won't do that then until we can do some more of getting you to the safer places. Absolutely. You know, part of this is is that we're allowing our brain to do what our brain wants to do. That's we're letting point. our brain lead us. Mm -hmm. You know, we're traditional talk therapy. The therapist kind of leads and sure. prompts and, you know, kind of has a little bit of say mm -hmm. in how a person 
feels and how they, you know, what they're feeling when they leave. Yeah. Where with EMDR, again, it's our brain doing the work. Mm-hmm. It's not that they're, I mean, we are doing work, but the brain's doing the majority of mm-hmm. it. And so, yes, we want to make sure that they are in a safe place mm-hmm. to be able to manage what the brain is yes. going to open up for them. Say it. Yeah. So what does it look like, right? If you're anybody interested, like then they hear weird voodoo shit and they hear witchy and... Um, and yet we're saying it's great, right? But so it's great, right? Yeah. It's great. So yeah. what is it like? What's the experience like? And how is it different from therapy? Because I think more people have done more traditional talk therapies and couple therapies and family therapies than mm-hmm. EMDR targeted mm-hmm. trauma treatments. Mm-hmm. So what I like about EMDR is that yes, it hits on the body. It hits on the thoughts that we have. It also hits on um, the negative belief systems that have been developed from whatever the trauma or the distressing event is. Mm-hmm. You know, and so we really, I mean, we do a thorough, or at least I do, and I believe you do too, um, a thorough history and really kind of get to know the client and the traumas and the experiences that they've been through. Also, the positive Mm -hmm. aspects of their life and what what makes them feel good and what helps them to self-regulate. Right. Um, You know, and then we kind of come up with a treatment plan. And then we um, kind of look at what what are we going to target um, with the processing, and we come up with several things. We come up with the worst part. We come up with a negative belief about themselves, um, their emotions, and where they're noticing it in their body, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what we go with. And from there, I mean, it's, it's just really super interesting because... You know, we do the bilateral stimulation, whether they're doing eye movement. You're moving your fingers uh-huh. back and forth as uh-huh. you say that, because that's what it looks like. Because right? that's what it looks like. You ask them to mm-hmm. follow your fingers with mm-hmm. their eyes, not their head. Right. Nope. Just Heads the eyeballs. Still, uh-huh. Eyeballs move, uh-huh. you know, or I've got tappers that vibrate. Uh-huh. Um, so one, it'll vibrate in one hand and then it'll switch uh-huh. to the back other and, and it just kind of goes back, back and forth. forth. And we do that for 30, 40 seconds or so. We stop. We ask them to take a breath. What do they notice? Mm-hmm. And then we want you to go with that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's kind of the whole session. Um, just kind yep. of going through that whole experience. And you're just really noticing what's going on with you. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's a memory, whether it's a thought, whether it's a, an emotion or whether things are changing in your body. Right, right. Um, and that's really kind of the processing aspect right. of it. Right. Um, you know, and, and then this is, this is always my favorite part. Um, the positive cognition. Yeah, it's yeah. so important, you know, after we've done the processing, to have a positive belief about ourselves mm-hmm. um, and really enhancing that and strengthening that mm-hmm. um, so that they can learn from these experiences mm-hmm. and be able to use them in the future, mm-hmm. um, having that positive belief about themselves. Yeah. yeah, that is the best part, right? I think, too, that, you know, kind of, telling talking to people about what you use the eye it's called eye movement because that's what they used at first right Mm -hmm. they have Mm -hmm. the clients follow the therapist's fingers back and forth and you want to move them far enough that they're actually having to move and not just generally move right Right. um the other types of stimulation you mentioned the tappers where it taps or buzzes back and forth you can also um, use tones right Mm -hmm. so headphones and that kind of thing tone back and forth but Mm -hmm. my understanding is you don't use tones exclusively you would add tones to an eye movement or add tones to a tapper um but you know what actually a lot of my clients like the actual tapping themselves yes right so a lot of my clients like to put their hands and I'll do it just to illustrate on either you know kind of the upper arm and tap back and forth Mm -hmm. and when we're doing the activation right of the distressing event or or Mm -hmm. you know the Mm -hmm. we're gonna go fast and Mm -hmm. I get that a lot oh that's faster so it's Mm -hmm. right right Um, And so tapping, you can also tap on the tops of your knees, the sides Mm -hmm. of your knees. Mm -hmm. I've never had anybody choose to tap right here on the collarbone, but that's another spot. Right. Um, It's really about, and I make my client, I don't make them, I ask them, I invite them to try and tap in different places and just notice whatever information they get back from their body because the body's going to know right away, like, oh yeah, I like that or no, 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 like this right now. I like, I like the way this feels because it feels like a newborn baby sleeping on your Mm -hmm. chest, Mm -hmm. but this is not something that would feel that right. would not feel good, right? right? So you just want, to want again to notice those things and respond. <clears throat> you can also use a light bar, 
Mm -hmm. right? Which I do mm -hmm. not use, but you can use, which is just literally a bar of lights, mm -hmm. right? That's set mm -hmm. on either side of the, of the client to which they watch the lights from one side to the other. And that's where they're moving their eyes back mm -hmm. and forth. You, mm -hmm. Also, that's very popular for people that are doing EMDR on a telehealth platform, right? right. They are, right. There's things they can use to where there's light that they watch or a, a, a ball oh. backing back mm -hmm. and bouncing back bouncing mm -hmm. back and forth, right? So mm -hmm. there's different ways to get this bilateral stimulation. Um, I know some therapists that work with kiddos that mm -hmm. use mats on the floor where they jump back and forth, right? right? Left, right, left, right. Right. Um, that, you know, so there's, uh -huh. there's drums. all kinds of drums, mm -hmm. drumming back and forth. Sure. Mm -hmm. Can't think about cultures, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So there's lots of, there's lots of ways to do it. It's really more about E, I always tell my clients, we have more data around using the eye movement, but that's because that's where it started. It doesn't necessarily right. mean it's the best. But I, you know, think that's still a great place to go for people. Mm -hmm. Some people want to close their eyes. And so using mm -hmm. eye movement is not as helpful because actually closing their eyes helps them get more in touch with the memory right. or the emotion or whatever. And some people do not want to close their eyes. Right. They need a little bit more of the awareness and the presence of being in the present. And so right. they want to have the eye, they want their eyes open. Again, mm -hmm. whatever feels mm -hmm. right, right for you. Right. Right. Absolutely. And so these sessions are a lot of what kind of looks like traditional talk therapy in the beginning when you're talking about getting history, building mm -hmm. resources. And then the witchy voodoo shit starts with the actual bilateral simulations of eye movement tappers, whatever, where you're asking your clients to recall, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the image of the distressing event, right? right? And then you're really reminding them of the negative beliefs, the feelings, their body sensations, and then you let them go. And as we say, we get out of their way, right? right? And the brain does what the brain does. And we're there to facilitate we're there to help. Sometimes people get stuck. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, you know, we'll just kind of go back and gently rearrange things right. or nudge them in a place and be curious. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes people will say, I got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing. So you got nothing. Great. Right. Okay. And sometimes we say, hang in there with nothing. I wonder what nothing could be. Yep. And people will find their way in. And sometimes we say we got nothing and we do nothing and we try again the next time. But I've never gotten to nothing and ne always had nothing. Right. I don't know about you. Right. No. no. I'm even tired of saying that word now. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing just that I wanted to talk about is how long does this take? One of the things I really like about EMDR is that I think it gets to trauma and works on it much more rapidly mm -hmm. than I would say some other mm -hmm. treatments of trauma. Mm -hmm. So kind of what I have heard and read, um, a single incident trauma usually takes one to three sessions um, where... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Complex, Complex trauma, traumas. Mm -hmm. um, usually takes a little bit longer, mm -hmm. um, probably closer to about 12 sessions or mm -hmm. so. Um, and kind of, I guess kind of what I've heard the comparison being is that three years of talk trauma equals about 12 sessions of EMDR yeah. therapy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I think too, we can say there are times when you have what we call processing sessions in between bilateral or even within the same session, you do a little mm -hmm. processing before you do, because this process, the good news is you're not just making progress on your goals when you're doing the bilateral, mm -hmm. we're knocking stuff out and making connections and meaning is shifting and bodies responding outside of the therapy office, right? right. right? So we're going back and checking progress, mm -hmm. right? And processing and people have insights and connections that are made very often outside yes. of the therapy room, right? Yes. So sometimes sessions in between are, hey, what have you noticed? Because people will come in and, and you hear this word, you know, how to break through. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I realized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and sometimes we listen too for just little things, you know, people are like, oh, it didn't work. And then in the next couple of sentences, mm -hmm. I actually slept last night. It was just so weird. And yes. I'm like, oh, but it's not working. Interesting. Uh -huh. Interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So sometimes it's subtle. Yes. Um, things that are demonstrating mm -hmm. that they are processing the yeah. information. So let's wrap up with our favorite part, like. What does progress look like? What what do you hear and see from your clients? And you say, that's it. Like, mm -hmm. we don't get to cut people's brains open and see, right? We don't put people under an fMRI and right. see this part is working differently. 
but we get to see it Mm -hmm. in different ways. So what's that like for you? You know, I think one of the coolest things that I notice is the different look of their face, you know, of their body, Mm -hmm. you know, they're standing taller. They come in with a smile. Mm -hmm. Um, And even if they're not smiling, you can just see it in their eyes. And uh, I mean, that's, it's nothing that's said. It's nothing that's necessarily yeah. done. It's yeah. just it's just noticing the difference of their attitude mm-hmm. and their tone and their perspective. Yeah, yeah. I think as therapists, we're so intuitive too, right, that that information screams us. Mm-hmm. One mm-hmm. of the things I tell my clients is that sometimes what the language that I hear that I, I, I think represents progress is that people will say, yeah, that, that thing happened, and I'm okay. Yes. It's that subtle. And that mm-hmm. sounds, I don't know if that sounds like big or small, but do you know what it means to be able to go through life and have had bad stuff happen? Know that more will. Mm-hmm. And say, mm-hmm. and I'm okay. I'm okay. Yep. That's, that's, that's mental health, right? And so, Man, to be in the presence of that, mm-hmm. that's, that's why this job is the best, yeah, right? Because absolutely. it's just, it really takes your breath away. Um, the other thing I really love is that when people will say, I don't know, my body just knows, right? Mm-hmm. Or I noticed that my body was different. Um, just the idea that people trust and are connected to mm-hmm. what their body's doing and feeling is, um, boy, I'm telling you, it's... It's such a gift. It is. It's Absolutely. such a gift. Mm-hmm. And so I sometimes, you know, when I'm listening, like you're saying, and people are telling you, sometimes it's subtle. But although I wouldn't say sleeping is not subtle. But, um, yeah, what a gift that stuff is. And to point that out and to help people understand that. You know, I, I use the silly metaphor a lot. EMDR is cleaning out your hall closet, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the idea that all that stuff still exists. It's just that it's put in a place that you can live with. Yes. Right? And Absolutely. so you may have that horrible, ugly ski coat, mm-hmm. but you keep it because you're not going to buy another one or whatever. Right? And so it's not different, but it's okay because mm-hmm. it's got its place. And um, to know that and to, to know where things are and to know how to operate within your system uh, again, I think that's what the balance of well-being and mental health looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Any final messages about EMDR? Because you are kind of our expert guru, mm. the first one here to to take the training. And um, anytime you can get Rebel talking about EMDR in case consultation, you can just kind of sit back because she's going to go, you know. I love it. I love EMDR. I love, you know, just how quickly it processes information that have been stuck for so Mm -hmm. long you know and that that's one other thing that I love about EMDR is that there's no time limit on it you know I can come in as a 60 70 year old woman and process trauma that happened when I was 10 you know and it it changes me and Mm -hmm. it changes my outlook on life Mm -hmm. and I just yes I love EMDR and I love the shift in perspective that Mm -hmm. it creates for people yeah yeah yeah. Well, good. Then we picked a good topic for us to discuss, yes. right? Yeah. I know. I know. Well, thanks for doing this. If I'm doing this, I'm glad I'm doing it with you, right? Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. I know. I know. So I'll say thank you to our audience for joining us. And um, if you have any questions or um, want to check out EMDR, I think Josh put some links, but um, I always advise clients that are looking into it to read about it and understand it, but don't watch too many videos of it right. because we want you to just be you having your EMDR experience, right? right. So and it is different for every single person. It is. And as a clinician, you got to be just cool with rolling with yes. that, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so you can check that out as resources. And um, we're here also. We've got several clinicians Um, in Mm -hmm. our offices that are EMDR trained and use it. So absolutely. Yes. Wishing you well and thank you.